Welcome, whoever you are, wherever you may be, welcome to CoreyCast. And if that's not the cringiest thing I've ever said in my life, I don't know what is. The purpose of this is not to be a typical podcast sort of thing. Maybe it can be that at certain times, but this will mainly be the place where I will talk about all the music that I have listened to each month, so it's going to be at least monthly if I have other ideas for other things to talk about, or if I have at any point in the future guests, God forbid, then that will be the place where I will talk to them here in this like Cory cast thing. So I'm going to go back to the very beginning of my channel, beginning of my reaction part of my channel. And I'm going to talk about my opinion on everything that I have heard from then until now. So that's the very first music video I made talking about Vildarta Ilva all the way up until my very latest video, which as of right now is Blue Reverie by Era. If you're on the Patreon, you will get early access to these episodes and be able to write in with any questions you have in the $5 tier. The idea for this is to try to replace what I tried to do with, you know, just having a random question thread every month on the Patreon. So if you're on the Patreon, you may have seen that. This is more putting that in with the rest of my talking about music and things like in with that. So it's all going to be one thing where I'll answer anybody's questions and I will also go through all the music that I've listened to and what I think of it now. Another part of this can be you guys asking me questions about anything theory related as well. So any music theory sort of thing, or if you want me to talk about what I like about a band's chord progressions or like chords that they use a lot or modes that they use a lot or melodies or certain traits that make them unique. You can ask those questions as well. That's on the $5 tier, which is the second from the lowest tier over on Patreon. So if that's something you are interested in, go ahead and check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Corey Clip. The links for that is, are in the description as well as my links for everything else. I have social media now. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, uh that might be is that it anyway i'm on social media so i don't go go look at the the link tree in my in the description of all my videos now so <laughs> um i'm gonna start from the very beginning Vildarta ilva this song i have not really listened to a lot since my first time hearing it because i want to hear it in the context of whatever they release next. I have listened to it a bunch, but not a lot recently, so I don't quite remember everything about it, but Villarta is probably my favorite band of all time, so it's no surprise that I love this track, and no surprise that I'm looking forward to anything Villarta does, and I don't think they can write a bad song, and I think I said that. I think that was probably one of the title of one of my Vildiarte videos, maybe Christofago was was the that was the title. But anyway, Ilva, it's still a banger. I just haven't listened to it as much because I don't want to ruin it for me when they ever put out an EP or album or whatever they're gonna do with these songs in the future. Because I don't think these are gonna be just singles. I think maybe they're putting them out as singles, but for future use, I think they're going to be in some sort of project in the future. My second video after that was actually my Polaris reaction listening to Fatalism. I have talked about this a lot in comments, and I mentioned it in other videos, as well as in my best whatevers of the year video I talked about it. This album has grown on me insanely much from the... Is that how I word that? I don't know. It's grown on me a lot since I first listened to it. I think I said there were some things that I didn't like and there were some fifth focused choruses that I was kind of iffy on the first time I listened to it, but as I listen more to it, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me anymore because it's just really solid overall in my opinion. With Regards is my favorite song by far. My phone just went off, let me mute that. 
With regards to my favorite song on that by far, I think the melody on that is incredible and the lyrical emotional content is really good too. It's just overall such a good album. I've kind of moved away from giving albums number ratings, but if I had to rate uh, this album, I think I would give it like a 9 out of 10 now. And I only say that because I rated it back in the video. I don't even re remember what I rated it because I don't want to go back and cringe at my, myself a few months ago. That was October 10th I published that. It does not feel that long. It does not feel like it's it's been that long since I made that video. Wow. <laughs> Alright, next. The next video, I listened to Thornhill Viper Room, which was a very controversial track. I liked it on first listen, and I'm going to say I still like it. It's still a good track. I have it on one of my playlists. I think it's on... No, it's not on my heavier playlist. It's on the more easy listening playlist. And I don't skip it when it comes on. It's kind of a banger. And I... On the day of recording, this... There's a new Thornhill track coming out uh, Wednesday. So, I'm looking forward to that. I will be making a video on that as well. Thornhill, just in general, they are a band that I discovered last year i listened to their album heroin and i really did like that one even though some people i found out later didn't i thought it was really solid uh, i listened to the dark pool as well and i think the first half of that album isn't quite as good but once it gets to all the light we don't see up through like all the end i think it's incredible and i put that one on my favorite albums of the year video over Heroin, purely because, um, what's the song? Lily in the Moon carries so hard, and none of the tracks on Heroin have quite the staying power of Lily in the Moon. So that's that's why I put that on there instead of Heroin. Even though I think overall Heroin has more good songs, but the, the songs that are really good on Dark Pool hit more than the songs that are really good on Heroin. Next up was Cellar Door. This song I really liked. I thought it was a really solid, heavier spirit box song. I really liked the EP as well, which I'll talk a little bit more about when I get to that video. But I don't have much to say about this song particularly other than it was really good. Next video I made was my Sleep Token Take Me Back to Eden musical analysis and song ranking. This is only one of two musical analysis videos that I've ever done on my channel, but I really want to do more. And I'm trying to think of what album I want to do for the next analysis. The only trouble with that is that I have to really think about the things that I want to talk about with the analysis album videos. And I'm pretty busy. I'm going to school and working and doing this. So that takes up most of my time as well as, you know, I have a son to watch out for and take care of. So I can be pretty busy, but I'm going to try to plan another one to do. Actually, I have a script of sorts planned out for uh, my favorite Celtic folk album that I have up there on my wall that you can't see, but I think I've mentioned it before, Alterum by Julie Fowlis. I have a script planned out for that. I've broken that one down and I've gone through and kind of planned out how, planned out how I'm going to do all of that. I just haven't sat down and actually done it yet, but that is something that is coming hopefully at some point. I don't know. I did all the heavy lifting for that. I just have to film the video, but... Anyway, uh, next up was that Villarta video, which I did not expect to get as big as it did. It currently has 7,855 views, 183 comments, 479 likes, making it the biggest video on my channel by a massive shot. That was the video that kind of cemented me in this little niche corner of YouTube in the Metal React community because Vildiato shared it on their socials, a bunch of people found me through there, everybody I feel like who has watched anything on my channel knows about this video, so I'm just really glad that I could do something that people enjoy so much. And that's kind of been how I've been approaching all this music and everything since, is you know talking about the music theory of these different albums and songs and trying to break that down. 
And now that's that's turning into the upcoming series where I'm going to kind of talk about music theory related to metal and like all the basics of that. So that's kind of been the progression of my channel and the Villarta video was where it really took off because that one, it's three hours and 17 minutes long. And I didn't even really plan anything for that video. I just kind of sat down and ranted and I had listened to those albums so much that I didn't have to plan anything because all I had to do was just sit and go. And it was so much fun to film. And I think you can see that in the video itself and seeing the reception from it and how my channel has grown from that was really, really cool. Nothing I think will ever touch the heights of making that video and seeing like hundreds of new people coming in and watching it and my subscriber count skyrocketing skyrocketing meaning like up by 200 but that's for me that's skyrocketing when i am just over 700 subs then i well i, I was kind of doing my elden ring uh 200 speed playthrough in the middle of there so i got a couple videos of that then i have the Karmanyaka ancient skills ep reaction which was my favorite ep of 2023 it's amazing. I still listen to it to this day. I still think it's one of the best EPs I've ever heard. It's incredibly solid. The melodies are gorgeous. The tone of the guitar is really, really good. And the singer, I forget the singer's name. I'm sorry. I i don't know. I, I knew at one point, but I get band members mixed up all the time. Uh, the singer's vocals are incredible. So that still holds a lot of a uh, big I'm, I'm see i'm losing words that still has a very special place in my heart as one of my favorite eps of all time now and that was i think the first new thing that i found or that i did a video on on my channel that i really really liked because fatalism i liked on first listen but that common yaki ep was the one that i the first one that i really really liked then we go to dance gavin dance war machine that was my next video i'm gonna be honest I love Dance Gavin Dance, but I have not listened to this song since the video. I can't even... I think I forgot that it exists. I've I've listened to Dance Gavin Dance since that video. I'll go back and I'll listen to, to Mothership or um, Afterburner or like, like Jackpot Juice or any of the albums, but I forgot that War Machine kind of exists, honestly, until right now. So maybe I should go back and give it another listen. But my opinion on that was it was it was okay. It wasn't as good as something like The Ghost of Billy Whirlton, which was their best newer single. But it was it, it's Dance Gavin Dance. It was, it was pretty good though. Polaris, The Death of Me. I did not like this one as much as Fatalism. I think I talked about it a little bit in the video, how I liked Fatalism better and that has grown on me a lot more. I still liked it but I have not revisited it very much. I think I only listened to it once or twice since making that video. And in those once or twice, other two times, I was like, this is okay. But I, I think it's kind of the same way that I feel about uh, Thornhill, the Dark Pool versus Heroin, where the, where the Dark Pool has more, it's got more consistent tracks that are really really solid it has more incredible songs there's a few kind of there's a few misses on there but the songs that are incredible are like really incredible whereas something like polaris the death of me is kind of more like the heroine of them if that makes sense if this comparison i'm making makes sense so fatalism for me is like the dark pool where it's got some really really great songs and the songs that aren't so great are kind of lesser than the death of me might be but overall the death of me doesn't quite reach the heights in those single individual songs that fatalism reaches so that's kind of how i feel about that then i heard era for the first time i listened to breach skyline and remnant those are just three singles that i was told to listen to and i checked those out i really liked breach skyline and remnant were okay and then I listened to the self-titled album, which I'll talk about later, and I kind of didn't really like that. But I really enjoyed Breach, so I want to hear Neon. I want to hear more of... I want to hear the Neon album at some point. I think it's on my Patreon poll, but everyone's voting for more proggy stuff. 
Then I heard Darko Rampage. That song is incredible. I know I said track of the year and then I didn't put it on any of my tracks of the year. That's because I think Darko hits really, really hard on a first listen. But as you go listen to it a few more times, it still hits. But they are really good at writing tracks that grip you first listen. And then as it, as it kind of goes along, I think it, it falls off a little bit just for me. Just, just a bit, just my opinion. Then we have Alt, The Orphan Breed. This song is crazy. I think it's my favorite Alt song. It still wasn't one of my favorite songs of 2023, but it was an incredible heavy track. I did not expect them to do something like that. And it was it was wild. I love that song. I, I still love that song. My opinion on that hasn't changed. Then we get to Silent Planet Super Bloom. I have listened to this album a lot since first hearing it. I titled the video the best Silent Planet album ever and then, you know, all that. I think in hindsight that may have been a little bit of an exaggeration. I still think that uh, what's the oh, what is it? Let me look it up. Give me one second. Uh, I th the album that um, the album that I found them through. Everything was sound. I still think everything with, was sound might be my favorite of theirs. Sometimes, some days it's a tie between that and when the end began, but those are both really solid. I found them through everything was sound, and then I was I was there when they released when the end began, and that was super hype. Iridescent, I'm not the biggest fan of. I I love the Night God Slept, but it still doesn't quite hit as hard as uh, the other two albums. Everything was sound when the, when the end began, and then Super Bloom. I think I would put like if I if I put everything was sound and when the end began as top two tied for number one sort of thing, then Super Bloom I would put at number two because it's very very good. I like it more than Iridescent and the Night God Slept, but I don't think I liked it more than Everything Was Sounded When The End Began. Same sort of situation, where Super Bloom has some really good songs, but overall I think that those other two albums have more consistent bangers than Super Bloom does. And I am working on a Super Bloom cover, I will get it out at some point. I'm not making any promises because y'all know how I am at this point. Um, then I listened to Era's self-titled album, and I did not like it. I did not like it. I felt it was really tough to get through. I had to kind of force myself to get to the end. I literally stopped before getting to the singles, and I said, I, or not the singles, the covers, and I said, I can't do this. I can't listen to more of this. And then people told me the covers were better, and I listened to the covers later in the day. And yeah, the covers were better, but I still really don't like that album. I haven't gone, I haven't listened to any of the, any of the, the album again. I, I don't want to. I, I just, I don't think I can, I don't think I can listen to that. I think I give it like a five. I would give it like a three now. I, like in, in hindsight, that might seem cruel. But I just really do not like that album. And I can't, in good conscience, give an album that I can't go back and listen to a, a medium five score. So I'll give it like a three. The I keep wanting to call them the singles. The covers, though, were really good. I loved Stockholm Syndrome. That was my favorite song on the album. And I put that on a playlist. So I listen to that every so often. But... I feel like when I listen to that song, I'm like, I can't go back and listen to era songs that don't have this kind of songwriting because I love the way Stockholm, Stockholm Syndrome is is written because it's a Muse song, but I can't listen to that sort of sound on an, on an era song with the songs on that album. I don't know. It's just, it's really not for me. Something about it really irritates me. The the tappy riffs and everything just drive me crazy. I, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry to all the era fans. Maybe the other stuff is is better. I did like Breach, like I said, so I want to check out Neon, but I just really do not like their self-titled album at all. All right. Then I listened to, after that, Loathe, I Let It In, and It Took Everything. And going from era, 
which is one of my least favorite, probably my least favorite album that I heard last year, to this album, which is my favorite, one of my favorite albums that I've listened to last year, was insane. I need a drink, hang on. I might forget to cut this out. I'll try. Whatever. <clears throat> okay. I loved this album. I loved everything about the album. I gushed over it when I listened to it. I think it is so unique sound-wise. It's beautiful. It hits those, I think I mentioned in the in the video, it hits those like liminal space vibes. And I've been getting a lot into liminal space horror. Not really because it's particularly scary for me, but because the vibe of it is so interesting. It's that vibe of, you know, places that you feel like you've been to and nostalgia horror and stuff like that, that things like the back rooms as overdone as those things have become. Things like the back rooms are really, really cool. If you know, um, what is it? Greylock, The Oldest View, series like that. Um, what was the movie uh, Skinnamarink? I loved Skinnamarink too. I love stuff like that where it's it's ambient. Even though Skinnamarink, it was kind of long and there wasn't much story to it. It was mostly just ambience, but the ambience was so unsettling and so creepy and I loved it. It's so good. That's sort of what this reminded me of. If you took that sort of thing and you wrote a metal album with that kind of concept, that's what I let it in and it took everything was. For me, that's what I feel like it was. It's it's so good. Um, what's it called? Is It Really You is one of my favorite songs of all time. I love the Sleep Token cover of that too. I listened to that as well. That was amazing. I just, I can't love this album enough. It's a perfect 10 out of 10 masterpiece album. There is not a single thing I don't like about it. It's incredible. Then I listened to Invent Animate. I listened to Heavener and The Sun Sleeps as if it never was. And this I was a little bit mixed on because the, this video and my video on the era self-titled album have the most dislikes of any videos on my channel because these are really popular albums that people love that I didn't like. I think Heavener, Heavener I would listen to again because Heavener I think was a little bit boring for me, but it wasn't egregious like era self-titled was. I don't want to go back and listen to that. I'm scared to go back and listen to Era Self-Titled, but I've I've listened to Heaven Air a couple times since then. I still think it's kind of like a 6 out of 10 album, but I still like a lot of it. There's some decent tracks on there. You've got False Meridian that was really good. You have Reverie, which was amazing. The... The title track that they released after the album, Heaven or the, the Song, is my favorite Invent Animate song. I loved that. And then the, the little EP, The Sun Sleeps As If It Never Was, I like that a lot more now. I think I was kind of iffy about it when I first listened to it in the video, but I've listened to that couple song EP more since then, and I really, really like it. The melodies on there, the tappy riffs and stuff aren't as bad as they are on Heavener. Are bad in quotations, I say, because I know, I know people like that, but I really don't. They aren't as they aren't as annoying to me as they are on Heavener. So that's that's the uh, saving grace of that. But overall, I still think Heavener is a little bit mid. I might like it a little bit more than the first time I heard it, but I still don't really love it but the sun sleeps as if it never was i really do like that's that's super super good that's a good little ep uh regardless of what i think about their sound though their album art is always top tier all of their albums look incredible the art and i i love them just for the art alone even if i don't really like all the music then i listened to seven year war fallen angel this was a request from somebody in my discord i'm pretty sure who suggested that i listen to this because he's in the band and this was if i remember correctly it's a bunch of like 18 19 year olds seems like just out of high school people who formed this band and it sounds really really cool it has sort of an older metal sound to it but it's really interesting and it's really really unique and i i, I loved it and there were a few pointers in there that i i said i i think i I would prefer them do some other things and I don't know. I gave him some things that 
you know, constructive criticism, that sort of thing. But overall, I thought it was really solid and they have a very bright future if they keep making music. So looking forward to that. Then I listened to the full Fear of Fear EP because that came out. So I, you, if you know me, you know I love Spirit Box. That was a banger EP. I loved it. I still love it now. It's kind of gotten a little bit like less plays than I would like for me. Mostly because there's only three new songs and I had broke the repeat button on the three singles after Celador came out. I was kind of just listening to those over and over again. And then when the full EP came out, I heard the three new songs and I was like, these are really cool. Um, what are the what are the new ones? Too Close Too Late is amazing. And then I also think Ultraviolet is incredible as well. I think Too Close Too Late and Ultraviolet are maybe the two best songs on the EP. So I'm glad they left them for the EP and didn't have them as singles. But you can't go wrong with any of the songs in that album. That's still a really good one. Then I heard the outro track to Paramore's album, This Is Why, Thick Skull, which was my very first Patreon song request. Not my first Patreon album request, because that was that was low. I let it in and it took everything, I think. I could be wrong. I think I think that was my favorite. Or that was my my first. Um I listened to the outro song to their album, This Is Why Thick Skull. I enjoyed it, but I haven't come back to it because I want to hear it again in the context of the album. So that album is on my Patreon poll. So if you would like me to hear that album, go ahead and vote for it. It's on there. It's been on there probably since I since I started the Patreon, I think. So go vote for it if you want me to hear the rest of it. I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember much of it, honestly. When you run a music channel like this, it's hard to keep track of everything that you do and listen to music a lot and give it a, a fair shake, especially when you're as busy as I am outside of a channel like this, because this isn't my full-time job. I mean, I just started this. I don't, I don't make enough money through Patreon or YouTube or anything to make it a full-time job. I mean, I don't make any money on YouTube. And then Twitch, I haven't made enough to even get a payout. So... Any sort of income that I've gotten from this comes from Patreon, and people have been very supportive on Patreon, and I'm so thankful for, for everybody who has supported me. Thank you to all my patrons. You guys are incredible. Then we get to Dean Tema, or as I call them, Diggin. This album, I said it's, it's instrumental album of the year, and it is. And to be fair, I didn't listen to many other instrumental albums last year, but this is this is. This is top tier. It works really well as a background soundtrack album. I'll kind of just have it on as I'm gaming or something, and it it helps me kind of focus on the music a little bit more if I'm doing something else. Because music like this can be a little bit monotonous if you're trying to listen to it and like take it in in an active listening session. I still loved it on my first listen, but I think I liked it even more as I was listening to it passively in the background as I was gaming. So good job peter this is amazing then i heard what might be my favorite prog album of all time the contortionist language and there is not much i can say about this album that i have not already said in the video but it's incredible it's a masterpiece it's a 10 out of 10 album it's one of the greatest albums I have ever heard. I think it's just, it's perfect. I've only listened to it maybe like four or five or six times since hearing it, but every time I'm still captivated start to finish. It is so, so good. I love it. That's about all I can say for that though. <laughs> then I heard Tesseract War of Being. And if you were on stream for that or you watched the, the full video or anything, I cried. Uh, I think the song, what is it, Sirens, I think was, was the song. I keep wanting to call it something else. Sirens, Tesseract, yes. Yeah. He's like, run away. Like that little part. I cried. That was amazing. Um, Drew Fortune was in chat when I streamed this during the, um, the I think it was the title track. Yeah. 
yeah, it, it was a title track, and he was hyping me up. He's like, "Look at this this part, Corey. Wait, here it's it's this part. It's coming up." So that that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then I made the fatal decision during this album reaction, and I've apologized to many people for this. I have made the fatal decision to talk over Legion, and people were rightfully pissed that I would do that. In all fairness, I didn't know. That it was one of the best vocal parts on the entire album but in hindsight that was a bad idea and it's because of that mainly that i have stopped doing album reactions live on twitch and i now do those offline and then just upload those to patreon so i can give it my full attention because you know dan Tompkins is going off on some of the craziest vocal performances of the year and i'm over here ranting about periphery and I missed that on my first time listening. But rest assured, I've heard it many times since then, and I appreciate how incredible it is, and I have heard it. So, you can rest, uh, rest safely. You can rest assured that I've heard it. All right. <laughs> then, I heard Boundaries, Burying Brightness. I don't like this album quite as much as I did on first listen. I still think it's really solid, but I think overall it's not my kind of metal as much as other things might be. I don't know. It's just... I, I, I talked about it in other videos and stuff, but I'm looking for more pop stuff lately. That's just kind of the mood that I'm in. That's kind of the vibe that I'm searching for. It's just more pop stuff. And that's just where I am in my life. So looking for like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, stuff I can sing along to. Just some of that. I'm just craving more of that just because I've been listening to so much prog and so much heavy music like Boundaries and a lot, a lot of that lately. So... I, I, I don't know the, this I've only listened to one or two times since my first listen and I I just think I need to be in a different headspace to truly appreciate it but it's still a good album that's what that's about what I think of it now then I heard Villarta Crystal Fogel that I I I love I love this song I think this is my second favorite song after my second favorite song of the singles after Den Spanska Kenslan because it's got something in here that's just, I can't quite put my finger on it, but I like it more than Ilva, and it just hits, and it grips. This is the one with, with, the, with the cleans, right? If I'm not mistaken, that part was incredible. It's so beautiful. I love it. I love this song. It's 10 out of 10. I can't wait to hear what Villarta is going to do with these tracks, and when they're coming out with a new song and whatever. That was amazing. Then I heard Grayscale Season specifically luxury depression i heard that before the album won the patreon poll and uh drew fortune commented that it wasn't a great representation of what the album was and i i agree with him now after listening to the full album it was still a good song but i think in my opinion that it's one of the less interesting songs on that album but it's still it's still really really solid i still i still like it I'll talk about that a little bit more when I get to... Oh, never mind. Hang on. Grisco season full album. Okay. So, after that, I heard the, I heard the full album. And I, I adore this album, too. Pink Mist, with that little intro, with the, the pink mist. That's the wrong key, but that little intro part into the heavy parts, into the weird shoegazy melodies where it's like champagne tears in king city that kind of stuff and then the the second track what was the second track i forget what it's called um but i get the melody from that stuck in my head a lot Volatile, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's like, look at the stars. That my forest. Whatever that part is. <laughs> I could be wrong in the lyrics. But that part, 
That's it's so good. I get that little melody that da, 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 da. I get some of that stuck in my head every so often. The best song on that album, though, I think, is the outro track. And I didn't give it the credit that it deserves on first listen. I think just because, like, I don't know, it, it didn't hit quite as much on first listen. But now, like, I cry listening to it. I love this album even more on more listens. I still skip Pilgrim because it's just weird. It feels it feels very out of place and awkward. So I just I, I kind of skip that one. That's probably my least favorite track on the whole album. But overall, it's such a good album. It's such a unique album too. It's very very different. I can't wait for this new album that comes out soon. To I think it comes out like first week of March if I'm not mistaken. So I'm really looking forward to that. Then I heard Knocked Loose, A Tear in the Fabric of Life. What an insane EP. I watched the video. I listened to the whole thing. I just uploaded the full thing on Patreon because the whole video is like 34 minutes long. So I'm sorry, on YouTube, not Patreon. Just uploaded the whole thing to YouTube because it's like 34 minutes long. Why won't I just give you the whole thing? No point in editing it down. It's going to be like a five minute highlights video. Man, it hits so hard. Honestly, I have not listened to it at all since first listen, because it's not really the type of music that I'll come back and listen to a lot, but it's still really, really solid. I remember loving it on that first listen, and yeah, it's about about all I have to say. It's still really good. Then I heard, excuse me, then I heard Kool-Aid by Bring Me the Horizon. This might be my second favorite track of the year so far. It was my first favorite until Still Hurts by Grayscale Season came out, and that overtook as number one track of 2024. But this song is incredible. The The chorus is so good. It's so good. Especially the nobody loves you like I love you. Oh my dear. That little melody part. Amazing. It's mind blowing how good this song is. It's literally ridiculous. It's incredible. <laughs> ah, I love it so much. I still listen to it all the time. It's on, it's on one of my playlists. I listen to it a lot. It's very, very good. I think I like it even more than I did on first listen. But that's amazing. Then I heard The Contortionist Exoplanet. And I did not like that album. At least not as much as Language. I think it's still a very good album for what it is, but it's just not for me. I don't think it's objectively bad where like you know, era, you can make an argument for their self-titled album that it's bad because it uses a lot of repeated tappy riffs and it all sounds the same and like there's a lot that are in the same key, heaven or same thing, a lot of the songs in the same key that sound the similar sound similar, but contortionist sounds so dissimilar that well, contortionist exoplanet. Contortionist exoplanet sounds so dissimilar from anything else that I've heard that it stands out and it's very unique, but I think it's just too chaotic for me. I think I mentioned in that video too, that's the first time I kind of said where I, I'm not really feeling, sorry, my nose is really itchy for some reason. I'm not picking my nose. I swear I'm not. It's itchy. Um, yeah, I'm kind of getting tired of Prague. And I know everyone keeps voting for these Prague albums on the Patreon poll. Guys, come on. But I can still appreciate prog albums while being tired of it, but Exoplanet just didn't do it for me. And I've listened to it once since then, and I've tried to get into it a little bit more, but it still doesn't really grip me, and I still don't really like it all that much. So I'm sorry to the Contortionist fans, but I just, I don't really like it. Nah. Eh. Sorry. Then I heard Invent Animate. A sleepless deathbed as as a single and i think i like it a little less than i did on first listen i still think it's a solid song still think it's one of the better invent animate songs i've heard but i kind of fell off of liking it since first listen i'm sorry again to invent animate fans but heavener is still their best song 
by far, followed by Reverie. And I don't... I'm just kind of... I'm very lukewarm on the rest of the stuff I've heard from them. People have said that their other albums are different, and they want me to listen to those. So I'll probably throw one of those on the next Patreon poll and see if people want me to check that out and kind of you know just see what that's like just to hear past invent animate but new invent animate i am not really the biggest fan of even though sleepless deathbed i think was better than most of the songs on heavener then i heard the reflections silhouette ep this thing is crazy i tried listening to it again it's still insanely chaotic I like their I like their new song, what is it, like Deva or something? Let me just double check. Yeah, Deva. I like their new song a lot. I just heard that on stream the other day. That's incredible. Deva is a is a great song. But the reflection silhouette is a bit wild and all over the place. And I think I just need to listen to it a bit more because I've only heard it once since listening to it. And I've been pretty busy since then. Granted, that was like right before school started back up again. So uh, I've been a lot, I've been doing a lot since then, and I haven't really had time to go back and check it out. I'll have to listen to it a little bit more. But I really think it's kind of too crazy for me. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, then I listened to Return to Life Kin. Heard this on stream, made a video on it. And this is from Long Raccoon in my Discord, who... This is Long Raccoon's solo project, Return to Life. This song is amazing. The progression of it was incredible. I listened to another Return to Life song. What was... I, I forgot. I'll make a video on it. I'm going to make a video on it because it was, it was really, really good. But I listened to another Return to Life song recently that was also amazing. A lot of talent. A lot of talent. Long Raccoon has a lot of talent. I'm looking forward to, to more stuff from them. All right. Then I heard Vola. And my life was changed. Vola is my favorite discovery on this entire channel. I cannot believe that I have not heard more of them. I've known about them for a long, long time, but I've never actually heard any of their songs. And then Zoltox requested 24 Light Years on stream. And I cried. I cried live in 4K. No. What's the resolution of this camera? It's 1080p but zoomed in, so it's like 240p. I cried live in 240p on the, <laughs> on stream. And I have been obsessed with Vola ever since. I have listened to... I'm just going to talk about them now. I've listened to Applause of a Distant Crowd, which is my favorite Vola album, and Witness. I love those albums to death. Witness, I think, is a little not quite as good as Applause of, of a Distant Crowd. I think Applause is a 10 out of 10 perfect album, and Witness is like an 8. But I love Vola. They have amazing melodies. 24 Light Years is still my favorite song, but I love the title track off Applause. I love Green Screen Mother, even though it's short. I love it. Like every single song. Every single song. Maybe with the exception of, of Smart Friend, because Smart Friend, Smart Friend gets a little bit, a little bit boring. But that's the only song off of Applause that I kind of skip halfway through because I'm like, ah, I've heard everything the song has to offer. Other than that, okay, well, then it's not a 10 out of 10 album. It's like a 9.5. But other than that, it's amazing. I am so excited to hear Vola in mazes. I just need to find the time to do it among all the other Patreon requests because Mary has just requested two albums for me to listen to. And then I also have whatever wins the next Patreon poll to listen to. Um, but I kind of like that I'm putting off in mazes because I'm listening to the other two albums a lot and just taking in more Vola, and I love it. I love it. It's so, so good, and I cannot get enough of them. And I like just taking in those albums without hearing more, and just listening to those, and really letting the music sink in, and understanding what they're doing with all the tracks, and how good everything is. I love it. It's so good. I know I said on the witness reaction that the last half was kind of mid for me and kind of fell off a little bit. I do like it a lot more now. I don't skip any of the songs when I listen to witness, even though I thought I might want to. I don't. I still think they're all really, really good. I just don't think they have quite as good structural variety throughout the entire track 
as other songs, as songs like 24 Light Years or Applause of a Distant Crowd or I don't know anything off of Applause anyway. Like any of those other songs, I don't think I think the last half of Witness doesn't quite live up to those hypes, but it's still really, really good. Anyway, I kind of looped, looped, I kind of lumped all of Vola into one little section instead of talking about them sequentially, so whatever. Then I heard Passenger Unseen, Divine Light Disconnected. This was also on the same stream that I heard Vola and Return to Life Kin. This song was really, really good. I'm going to be honest, I haven't gone back and listened to the entire album. This was uh, a request from someone in my Discord who came in and asked me to listen to it. I really did like it. It's like a cool, almost cinematic Thal album outro. So I'll have to go back and check out the full album at some point. But I, I did really like that. Then I heard Sky Harbor Guiding Lights, which is one of my favorite prog albums ever now. I go back and I listen to that every so often. If I have time, it's so good. Because I, I can't just listen to chunks of it, except for Patience. I listen to Patience. I, I threw Patience on a playlist. That song's incredible. Watch me burn it all down, Parasite Town. That, that little melody in that song is so good. It's perfect. Nothing wrong with that song. Um, overall, I think it's not quite as good as my favorite Prague album that I've heard on this channel, Contortionist Language, but it's still really, really solid. It has some parts that are kind of forgettable, but I really like it overall. Uh, yeah, then I heard Vola, Landmarks Creature. That was the that's the next video I made. I think I think it's. It's a good song. It's got some cool parts. It's got the rap part in the beginning. Uh, I think it kind of gets a little bit boring as the song goes. I did like the breakdown where it kind of cuts off. Like you think it's gonna hit super hard, but then it cuts off and like the guys on the hat on the hi hat going crazy. The breakdown was pretty cool. I think it's a solid song. I'd be interested to hear it in the context of an album because I I might like it more then, but we'll see. The next video I made was Bad Omens and Poppy collabing on the song Van, Violence Against Nature. That was an interesting collab. I still don't quite like it as much as Poppy's other music, and I wish that Noah Sebastian sang on that song, even though I know it's it's more of like Poppy's song with Bad Omens featuring on instrumentals. She done, she's done that before, like, uh, what was the song? X, I think? that she had uh, Fever 333 did the instrumentals for that. It's still interesting. I keep saying interesting too much. I'm aware of it. I know. It's still good. But I've listened to it once or twice and overall I don't... I don't eh, eh. It's okay. It's pretty mid though. Uh, then I got a, a Patreon request to the grave Shock Tactics. I haven't listened to the song since the first time hearing it. Kind of just, I, I, I don't know. I liked it. Thought it was okay. But it's, it's really heavy and I haven't been in a heavy mood lately. It's heavy instrumentally and lyrically. I just haven't been in the mood for it lately. So sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just... I'd be interested to hear more why do I say that why do I like I talk way too fast sometimes I talk faster than my mouth can keep up with my brain has ideas and I say things way faster than I mean to and I think that's a, a byproduct of my stutter that I used to have I used to have a crazy stutter back in like middle school high school and now I don't. Now I kind of force myself out of it. But there's still little remnants in my speech of that stutter that kind of come back every so often. Like I have weird pauses in sentences because I'm forcing myself to think about what I want to say. But if I get excited about something, I speak way too way too fast. So sorry about that. Uh, I already talked about Vola. I talked about Contortionist Exoplanet. Then I made my Sleep Token meme video, which was pretty fun. <laughs> I want to make more stupid mashups like that at some point. <clears throat> um, then I heard my favorite song of the year so far. Grayscale Season still hurts. This song is unbelievable. 
that key change, that not even key change, like, like a whole vibe change. I think someone said that in the comments. The change from like the heavy part into the soft acoustic guitar. And then you have like the it still hurts. And it just, oh, it's like I listen to it and I'm transported to some beautiful world that I'll never visit. But I hear it and I'm entranced. And it's my favorite song of the year so far. I can't wait for more of them. Can't wait for this album. I'm so excited for this album. Then Then I listened to, and all I can say is... Uh, Hostile Contact featuring Tolpas. This song was really interesting. I know, I think they just dropped a new song or segment of a song. I still don't understand what exactly they're doing because their songs on YouTube feel like you take a little section of a song, like a one to two minute section, and you just cut out and they upload it on YouTube. So I don't know what exactly, if that's what their songs are and that's the point of it. And it's supposed to be maybe songs on an album that flow together or something if that's what it is i still don't know but it really throws me off anyway the song itself was really really good it was it was really interesting mostly because of the use of unconventional instruments like you had string instruments in there that made it incredible and it just it it heightens it from just a normal ball song to something unique something that stands on its own and that's what i'm looking for more bands need to try things that makes that make them unique and adding other instruments in there is one thing you can do that makes it super super unique then i heard calandra brave new world live this was a request from marius i love this song This song inspired me to listen to their full The Line album, and that's probably one of my favorite albums of the year now. I want to do an analysis video on it. That's how much I love it. It's so good. That whole album hits so hard. I'm going to save my full opinions on each song track by track until I do the video on it because I am going to do an analysis video on it, but just know it's unbelievably good. I love it. It's incredible. Uh, then I, okay, I put out the Witness video from Vola, but I ta- already talked about that. <clears throat> then I listened to Darko Bunny Suit. This song I like more than Rampage, as far as like their, their newer singles go. I also listened to Shanghai live on stream, but I didn't think I could put the video up on YouTube because, you know, if you've seen the video, so I didn't do a video on that. But if you watched the stream, I think you can go back and watch the VOD on Twitch to see my reaction to that. That song was crazy. I loved the little weird outro of that. Bunny Suit had Tom Cleans, and I'm all on board for Tom Cleans. That was <clears throat> that was amazing. I think as a song, it's a little bit less interesting than Shanghai, but still better than Rampage. So if I had to rank the three singles, I think I'm pretty sure those are just the three released the three singles they've released since Oni, right? If I had to rank them, I would put Shanghai number one as like top, and then I would have Bunny Suit. And then Rampage. Yeah, like that. That's how I would rank them. Bunny Suit was still good, but it doesn't quite reach the crazy heights of Shanghai, in my opinion. Uh, Then I got another Patreon request to listen to the Amity Affliction, Cut It Out. And I I really liked that. I want to go back and I want to hear more Amity Affliction because I miss this older, like, 2000s style of metalcore, crabcore type thing. I miss it. I want to hear more of it. So if anyone wants to recommend another Amity Affliction album or something similar, maybe I'll throw the album that this is from up on Patreon. Or somebody on the video, I think, said that one of their other albums is like the best and I should listen to it. So I might throw that up on the Patreon. Either way, I want to hear more of that kind of stuff. Then I heard Era's newer single, Cure, and I liked it. I really did like it. I thought it was very different from their self-titled album in a really good way. It had a groove to it. It kept going. 
There wasn't much going on in the way of melody or anything like that, but it was really, it was really groovy and it kept going throughout and it was, it was, it was a really solid song. I honestly like it even more now than I did on first listen because I've listened to it a few times since then. I think I like it even more. It's amazing. It might be my second favorite era song that I've heard, but uh, what is it? Blue Reverie is my favorite era song. That one, I think, has the best variety of any era song that I've ever heard. It's got the best melodies. It's got the best chords. That one is incredible. So, so good. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm on my era redemption arc now. We'll have to see when this new album drops April 5th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then I listened to Time the Valuator, How Fleeting, How Fragile. And this one... Oh, wait, did I talk about my... Oh, I didn't. I didn't talk about the other... Okay, there's there's an album that I have heard. Uh, okay, I'll just tell you. I listened to Contortionist Clairvoyant. It's on my Patreon because it got blocked on YouTube, so it's not showing up in this YouTube list. I will give my thoughts on that later because I have to hear it a few more times, but just know that's coming. That's coming up later. I will put that on a note to talk about that on the next Corey cast. God, it's so cringe. I'm sorry. But hey, you know, it works. Whatever. Then I listened to Time the Valuator, How Fleeting, How Fragile, full album reaction. I haven't had enough time to digest this since putting it out, so I will let you all wait for that reaction as well or that elaboration on what i think as well i'll have to let that digest a little bit more listen to it a little bit more but i still still kind of liked it 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 was it was was still pretty good so pretty good i didn't i didn't think it was incredible but i think the melodies and the vocal stuff was the best part of it for sure it was it was really really good but i said it many times before and i am just kind of getting tired of prog so that might bring down my score a little bit if I were to score albums, but I don't anymore. Then I heard While She Sleeps to the Flowers. That one got me teary eyed. I saw other people reacting to it and doing like, you know, who, I, who was it? Like Metal Bird that had Try Not to Cry in the title. <laughs> um, actually, I don't think it was Metal Bird. It was true. I don't know. I, I don't remember. But I saw other people reacting to it and I was like, okay, maybe I'll hop on the trade and see what's going on. Yeah, it's good. I've listened to it a couple more times since then. It's only been a few days at the time of recording since I uploaded it. But musically, it's it's still pretty good. I think it hits more based on the lyrical content and the content of the video. I think maybe musically it's not quite as good, but it really hits emotionally. It's so solid on an emotional standpoint. Uh, just today, I put out my highlight reactions to Tesseract Altered State, which also got blocked on Patreon. The full album got blocked on YouTube, so I had to put it on Patreon and I'll just upload the video there, the whole thing. Uh, I, I love Altered State. I know I said I'm tired of Prague, but when something that good comes around, I can't help but appreciate it. It's been a couple weeks since I actually listened to it, even though I just uploaded the highlights video today, but I love it. It's, it's amazing. It, it's going to take a few more listens. I still have only listened to it the one time. So it might take a few more listens for me to form more of an opinion on it. But overall, I think it, it's amazing. It's got great melodies. It's got great structure. I think the saxophone implementation is the best part of it, possibly. It's just a really, really overall solid prog album. And then at the time of recording, this is not out yet. It's scheduled for tomorrow, Tuesday, the 27th, but Blue Reverie. I listened to this on stream. So if you were on stream, you already saw the reaction to it. By the time this video comes out, I think it's going to be, you'll have already seen it. At least by the time it comes out on YouTube, because Patreon gets it early. Ha ha ha. But (laughs) at least by the time it comes out there, you'll have seen it. I love Blue Reverie. I listened to it only one other time since stream yesterday, and I still love it. It's got such a good progression. 
I think the one negative I gave it was that the heavy part of the song, the last half of it, wasn't, or it didn't do enough development to keep it interesting, but I think I can kind of push that to the side and just, I don't think that bothers me as much as maybe it did on the first listen, but after, again, only one more listen, after only one more listen, it's still really good. It's still solid. So I am in my era redemption arc. Maybe I'm really going to like this album that comes out on April 5th. Era. Cure. April 5th. Coming out. April 5th. Uh, tell me if that's wrong, because maybe I'm drilling into my head something completely wrong, but that's what I remember from stream. Anyway, that brings me to the present. That brings me to... Now. That's about where I left off. So I have now covered my current opinion on everything that I have listened to on this channel from my first reaction video to Vildarta Ilva. Sorry about the mic thing. I'm just kind of trying to adjust it to be okay. Up until my most recent video that isn't even out yet, Blue Reverie. I, I'm so grateful to all of you for all of your support in every way that you guys have supported me. I've only been doing this since October, but I have seen such insane growth since then, and it's only up from here. I'm not stopping anytime soon. I'm gonna keep doing this. This is fun. And I'm kind of making a little cash on the side too, you know, that's, that's not bad either. But thank you so much for watching this first episode of CoreyCast. I know might be a little weird for a first episode, but whatever. I'm still trying to figure out the kinks of everything. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the songs that I've talked about here or anything else, let me know in the comments. If you would like me to talk about any specific artist on this little podcast thingy, anything that they do specifically that's really cool. If you have just any general questions, anything, anything at all, anything music related, anything me related, let me know in the comments. But here's the thing. I will only answer questions to people who pay the $5 tier on Patreon. I will only answer those questions in a video. So if you have just general questions that I can answer quick one off in a comment, yeah, I'll do that. But if you have any questions that require a video, like something like, oh, what are, I don't know, what are, what are make them suffers unique qualities? What makes them unique? What chord progressions do they do use? What melodies do they have? Why, why do, why does this make them suffer song sound like a make them suffer song? If you have a question like that or a specific artist you want me to dive deep into, ask that in the Patreon version that I'm releasing on this, because Patreon will, will get this early. So join the $5 tier on Patreon, ask that question there, and I will answer that in a video. But like I said, if you just have a, a quick question that I can answer in a couple sentences in a comment, then just comment and, and let me know over on YouTube. But thank you so much for all your support. Again, I look forward to how my channel is going to grow and how this part of my channel is going to grow. The more analysis centered side of things that's kind of a little bit away from the reactions even though it's still about the reactions but me talking more about the reactions and not just the reaction part i'm really excited for the future of this and my idea to combine the q a and me talking about the stuff that i've listened to and how my opinions have changed into one thing into like a little podcast thingy was i, I had an idea for that last night as i was eating dinner and now i'm really excited for the future of this. So hopefully this become a, this becomes a long running thing and it becomes very successful and all that stuff. So I want to get some guests on here eventually when I become a little bit more popular because I'm very small right now. I don't think I could get any guests. I don't think I can, maybe I could reach out to some smaller people and get them in for an interview or something, but I'm interested to do some more with this. Let me know if you have any ideas for this podcasty type format. And thank you for all your support, and I'll see you all later. Have a good day. Goodbye.